talk us um, through the, the symptoms of schizophrenia just to, to help people kind of understand this a bit more. Okay. Well, um, schizophrenia has three types of symptoms. They're positive, negative, and cognitive. The positive symptoms, they don't actually, they're not like, yay. It's just called they're positive because they're add-ons to your personal behavior. They're like, you know, hearing things and talking to things and seeing things, hallucinations and things like that. Negative symptoms, they take away from your personality. You might become very quiet, very mute, not really talk at all. And it just kind of go maybe catatonic. And then cognitive symptoms are just more like learning changes or maybe just not understanding things that are said to you. And those are the three main different symptoms that you can have when you have schizophrenia. Wow, that's really interesting. I didn't, because I think when people hear the term schizophrenia, they often attribute it to, as you said before, like the hallucinations and, and seeing things. And do you know, do you mind asking if I ask where you fall into those categories? Um, I, I, I would say the po- positive, like very delusional, there's, I come up with like a uh, fake memories, fake stories, fake things all the time. Wow. I think the difference between when I was younger and now is that I can think of something, something will come through my head, a memory. And I will say, that's not true. That is a delusion. Ignore it. Wow. And that's the difference. When I was younger, I would believe everything. And I would make up more stories and more stories and more stories and believe a multitude of stories that would just be, 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 turn into nonsense. But now it's more like that never happened. Ignore it. Wow. See, because I, I all right. So I, I have this like um, issue with optimism, right? <laughs> I probably see too much of the positive. And then you tell me something like that. And I'm just like, you must be one of the most creative people out there. For good though. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Because what happens, it's like all of a sudden I think like, oh, remember that time that this happened and all that happened over there and we went to do this and we did that and we did this. And I'm like, that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Leave my head. That didn't even happen. Or mm-hmm. a lot of times it comes with like, you know, that deja vu feeling. Yes. That will happen. And I'll be like, I did this. Mm-hmm. And then I'll think I did this in my past life. And I'm like, the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This never yeah. happened. Stop it. Stop yeah. it. And I'm like, <sighs> you know? Yes. Yes. So it's almost like, 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 yeah, just, it's just like, I get delusional about like things. I'm like, just just go away already. Just stop. It's just like, yeah, the difference now is that I can, I know when I'm delusional. Totally. You know, totally. At least I really hope I always know. I hope (laughs) sometimes, you know, perhaps. It's very true. Yeah. Sometimes (laughs) a few things can just uh, slip through the cracks. (laughs) for (laughs) For sure. I think, um, there's always, there's always two sides to, to every coin. Um, and so I've, so I work as a counselor and, um, often I'll have clients and, you know, it won't necessarily be schizophrenia but things they're dealing with and all that sort of stuff. And I find that a lot, and I probably have a natural bias to creativity as a filter. And I find that, um, people kind of get a lot of relief and therapy from filtering the things that kind of move through their head and be able to, you know, um, use it, um, you know, creative expression, um, like writing, painting, artwork, you know, just a way to kind of perceive the world in their own funny little bubble. Do you use any of that sort of stuff? I, I don't really know. I, I, I use it when I'm just so bored. It just keeps me really entertained mostly. I mean, sometimes I'll just like draw things and get lost in the drawing because I'm so busy talking to myself that I have no idea what I've done. Yes, 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 yeah. exactly, exactly. And I look, I mean, I use it for myself too, because I, I can kind of relate to that where I'll have a thought as I seen pictures. And um, this is probably one of the reasons why I struggle with anxiety for so long is because I seen pictures and then that picture will associate itself with a memory. And then that with another picture. And I just have these kind of what ifs this abstractly represent themselves so quickly before I'm like, whoa, I was just in a world then. And um, writing helps me kind of like, you know, um, move through that. Well, if that did happen, well then let's write about that and, and all that sort of stuff. But I think having a, an outlet like that, you know, or just some form of way to catch, even like you say, you're like, Whoa, I'm, I'm delusional right now. Um, can be so helpful. And it sounds to me like that was something that really helped you, um, you know, move from the, the childhood world where it was probably quite frightening and quite scary into something where you can almost kind of laugh at it. Do, do you want to talk us through that? Like, like younger when I was like scared of it, I, yeah. I, I, you know what, it, the way it used to be when I was younger, 
I would come home every night. I was miserable. I was depressed. And at night I would go completely paranoid, delusional and say, today, when you said that to that person, they thought you were an idiot. And when that person looked at you, she thought you were ugly. And when you were in class, those people behind you, they laughed at you. Wow. Yeah. And it was just horrible things, one after another, one after another, completely, even if things didn't happen, I was making up that they happened and I believed they happened. Mm. I also like believed that my mother was trying to kill me. And I actually, I, I, I had made, I was speaking somewhere recently and I met up with another person. Well, I met up with a woman at, um, after it and she was saying my daughter has schizophrenia and she also i say in the speech like you know i thought my mother was trying to hurt me she goes did you ever accuse your mother of like abuse real abuse and say she really tried to hurt you and it wasn't true and i, I was like i did that exact thing i know exactly wow. what you're talking about and she and she's like my daughter is is saying we did all these horrible things to her that we never did and i'm like yeah i did the exact same thing i Whoa. know exactly what you're talking about you know she needs to just realize somehow that She's making it all up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How do, how do you move into that? Because I just imagine it would be so hard to take yourself out of the jar and see, no, these are made up thoughts, you know, as you say. How, how, how do you get to that stage where you can catch yourself? Like, is it a training? Is it a... It, it's, it's, a tr it's a training and it's also a medication thing. Okay. Because I remember, like when I, I remember not being medicated at all about the age maybe of 22, I was with a few of my friends and something kind of bugged me and something was really making me anxious and I'm hanging out with my friends, but they're here and I was in my head the entire day, not talking to any of them and only talking to myself yeah. because I was so anxious about something. I couldn't stop having delusions about it and I mm. couldn't come, I couldn't be in the world because I couldn't get out of my head too much. So it really, it just takes a long time to learn what is a delusion and maybe find the right medication that helps you learn it. And then also kind of learning patterns, you know, like I said, like when I have the deja vu, then I realized I took me a while to be like, there's no way that I have this much deja vu. Like it's ridiculous how much deja vu I have. Like this yes. doesn't make sense anymore. But it, it just took a, it took a while. I had really just had to learn myself, I guess. I didn't yes. realize I had all these tricks, but apparently I do. Exactly. Well, yeah, see, and then that's the optimist in me that, you know, they're, when we're talking about integrating into society, you know, we want to be able to get along with people and, you know, not kill people at the flip of a hat. And that's something I need to learn myself. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so much of that as well that is our unique ability to see the world in our own incredible way. And I think, part of the reason why I wanted to speak with you is because, um, you know, you've, you've kind of turned this uh, illness and something that you really struggle with growing up into something that is actually a force for good. And part of that force for good, you know, there's, so it's a clothing brand uh, primarily, is that right? Clothing, clothing brand and uh, oh, a mental health clothing brand. It uses the uh, medium of apparel and art to spread awareness. Yes. Awesome. Oh, and art as well. Yes. Oh, cool. Talk us through that. What kind of artwork? Oh, artwork that I've just been working on for a long time. Um, it all comes from a place of anxiety. You can check it out. It's pretty Legend. awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. yeah. We'll see that. And that's what I mean. Like you, now you've kind of filtered the onus into a creative expression that also brings you money and, and helps other people as well. Because I imagine that you saying to, to the mother, you know, I did those exact things would, would have provided her with a crazy amount of relief. Yeah. Oh, definitely. 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 Yeah. It's crazy. Cause you just think that I just can't imagine what this is like for parents as well, growing up and thinking, well, hang on, you know, I, I was never doing any of that, but they really, really believe that, uh, you know, that we're out to get them and all that sort of stuff. Am I right in saying that schizophrenia is something that's diagnosed around the early twenties? I, I would say, yeah, I think it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And do you know why that is? I'm not, I'm not totally sure why that is. Sometimes I think it is because at that age, people are kind of starting to just take care of themselves and maybe they just can't do it. Yes. Sometimes okay. I think it's that, but who, who, you know, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not the ex, I'm not an expert. True. True. <laughs> That's what like, I think. Though. You're an expert on your own experience. So that makes sense. Yeah. 